It's hard to imagine that Pokemon has come so far in the many years it's been around. I still remember seeing red and blue in a Game Boy Color and sitting down most nights just trying to beat it, losing every chance I could and thinking that a Charmander, a fire type, could defeat Misty with her water type Pokemon. But wow, 20 years. It's... Oof. This series is just about like a year younger than I am, and that's really strange that I, I slightly predate Pokemon, which is actually is pretty cool. Though it's super cool of Nintendo to kind of re-release Pokemon, though they were a bit late, considering that we've been asking for Pokemon Red and Blue and Yellow to some extent for a very, very long time. Uh, they kind of left it at Fire Red and Leaf Green being like, those are the remakes, now we're going to focus on the remakes now and the current generation. Which, Sun and Moon also got announced, so that's really cool. But, it's different going back and seeing a lot of the changes that they've made. A lot of people look at Pokemon as a very stagnant series. That it's the same thing from game to game, and to some extent they're right. Pokemon hasn't really changed since its inception, aside from a few spin-off titles, and even they don't stray too far. Of course, we have the Pokemon Rumble series, this Pokemon Snap, Pokemon Channel, which is arguably not really a game, and Pokemon Stadium, which is just a battle simulator, which was the concept of putting your taking your Pokemon that you've earned and brought them back up into... You put them through all those trials and adventures in red and blue, and then you just kind of brought them back into Pokemon Stadium. And then like battling them out, doing all kinds of challenges, and getting cool prizes. I know a lot of people didn't actually experience the prize system in Pokemon Stadium, if only for the fact that it was really hard to come across a Game Boy Link, uh, that the pack that would let you do it. Not only with all the weird games and everything like that, but you really gotta look and see. And anyone who's played Gen 1, anyone who's actually a Pokemon fan that has gone through each series will agree that while there are always similarities, while it will always be Pokemon, while you'll go on an adventure, you'll be a child, you'll get your first Pokemon that one of three types, and you'll go on an adventure to gather badges and stop some evil force at the time. It's always going to happen, but what changes is the, the f environment, the atmosphere, not to mention all the mechanical changes. I was recently laughing because a lot of my friends have gotten Pokemon Red and Blue, um, and y Yellow seems to be the least popular, though I've seen a bunch of people grab Yellow as well. And they're, they're playing through it, and they're realizing how broken the game is. <laughs> And personally, myself, I haven't picked it up yet. I'm going to, don't get me wrong. But as of right now, my debit card is kind of lost in the wind, so I'm waiting on a new one. Don't be stealing my debit card, people! It won't do you anything! But, um... Like, for example, with the broken mechanics, you have Wrap, which is a move that, like, tangles yourself around a the other enemy Pokemon, and you do a little bit of damage each turn. Now, in current games, it's two to five turns, and it rolls a dice to see how many turns it'll do. And then probability lets it decide whether a Pokemon breaks free early, or if it breaks free at turn five. In Pokemon Red and Blue, the dice is a lot more unforgiving, so you have to actually dis like the programming has to decide whether or not you break out of rap at any given time and the chances of getting out of rap are very slim the problem with this is not only that you're taking damage every turn but you're also not able to react or move making rap one of the most broken moves in all of pokemon let's not even get into fire spin which does pretty much exactly the same thing Plus, on top of that, if you have a Psychic Pokemon, you've already beaten the game. You might as well just not go forward. <laughs> psychic breaks everything. And you know what? As, as much as we look at, I'd look at this thing nowadays and go, Wow, they really didn't quality control this. It was the first one. And 
Despite these inherent flaws, the game still functioned and worked and was utterly enjoyable. I still remember, probably in around 2002, when I was a little older, uh, sitting in Florida on vacation and I had finally beaten the Elite Four. I almost broke my Game Boy, uh, Game Boy Advance SP by tossing it. Uh, luckily it landed on a couch, but I was so excited when I beat it. But myself in the Hall of Fame was... I remember too, I had beaten it with my last Pokemon, it was my Char, uh, my Charizard. And it was just fantastic! I, my Charizard beat, uh, at the time I believed I called him Dean. Uh, my ri the rival Dean, uh, his Blastoise. Moment of absolute triumph. Great feeling. And really that's what I wanted to talk about. I just wanted to go realize, you know, give Pokemon its nods. It's 20 years old and it's a series that's very strong and has brought many people into the gaming atmosphere. And has, at first, as a devil's plaything, you know, making evil monsters witchcraft battle. And now has spawned into one of the cutest and most amazing series. You gotta give it props for that. It spawned such a culture around it, competitively and casually. I know, for one thing, if you ever go to a convention, have a Pokemon game beaten. Have a Pokemon game beaten, ready to go. And it's, make sure it's the most recent one that's out. Of course, either a remake or not. And go about and just find a find a place to lounge out when you're on your break in the middle of a con. Take out your 3DS, show that you're playing Pokemon, and I guarantee you, you'll find some people who are willing to either trade, chat, or battle. And you'll make so many friends. Some of them will be last last forever. And now with that, the age-old question comes. You think we'll ever see a really major series Pokemon game come out on, like, a console? Personally, I don't see it. But I wouldn't mind a Pokemon Coliseum or Pokemon XD type game. Maybe not with Shadow Pokemon, but a game that's more story-driven and that explores different areas again. Like, those are... Pokemon Coliseum is arguably my favorite Pokemon game, if only for the fact that Again, like I mentioned probably a thousand times, uh, I used to be visually impaired, and so playing on a small screen, I had to do it very slowly over a very long period of time because I got headaches and all kinds of weirdness, and I could barely see the games. And I, I played Pokemon. Pokemon were one of the few games I forced myself to beat. I've beaten uh, Red, Crystal, Ruby, Emerald, Pearl... White, X, and recently Omega Ruby. Those are the main. Those are the main Pokemon games I've beaten. And then I've beaten. And Coliseum came out. And I was so excited. And oh my god, it was great because you start with my one of my favorite Pokemon, Umbreon. As uh, you don't get a Vulpix, which is very sad. You always need Vulpix in your life. He's. He, he, it is great. Female Vulpix, preferably. Just because she's she's always great to have a little female Vulpix. But I'll take both. I usually never evolve Vulpix, even though its stats are usually garbage by the time it hits any point or it needs to evolve. It, it's, it's just love Vulpix. You could stat train it, even though it's probably not available competitively anymore. Or ever. But I'm, I'm trailing off topic. Coliseum and XD were such great additions. And I'd love to see more of them. But uh, on the topic, I suppose, of Pokemon games coming to consoles, Pokemon Tournament's also coming. Which is super exciting. I'm totally probably going to do a casual Friday. At least one of Pokemon Tournament. Either to cash on the hype or simply just to play the game and have fun with it. Because it looks so good. And I know a ton of people who are excited about it. And if you're a Pokemon fan, fan in general, even if you're not really a fighting fan, it's worth it just to give it a go. If not that, find a friend who's willing to do it and go hang out and kill you. It just beat each other up senselessly for like a few hours. You'll have fun, just like with Smash Brothers. Anyway, I've kept you probably long enough here. If you made it this far, congratulations! Want a little secret? 
I already know what the next Let's Play is going to be. Um, and oh my god, why am I talking about Let's Plays when I have so many things to do? I only have Darksiders to finish. I've been thinking about it, and I recently been playing Banjo-Kazooie to try and catch up, and I'm not having fun with it right now. And you know what? I mentioned this before in many projects I do. I prefer quality over quantity. I don't want to meet a quota. I don't want to meet a deadline. I don't want to force myself to do something that I don't enjoy. So Banjo is not going to happen. Not, not right now. I'll totally finish it. That's definitely a series that's on the quota list. But right now, as a collectathon, it's not hitting my buttons. Mainly because I've probably beaten Banjo because he's so many times. And it's just not filling the niche I want to do right now. Second of all, The Witcher being redone. Nothing around it. It's, the series is awful. I tried to rewatch it to catch catch myself up on things, and in general, I ended up just kind of being bored and doing other things and not paying attention to my own commentary. With Darksiders, I'm actually enjoying myself and can watch the videos. Let me see where I need to make edits, see where I make, need to make things happen. With The Witcher, it's not so much. I really need to find a good way to do commentary in that, and I think starting over now with a new microphone, a new capture software, as well as just my general personality of having worked in retail for a good while, I think I can finally make it happen. But, it needs to be redone for that to happen. So we can expect The Witcher to not continue immediately after Darksiders. So after Darksiders, what's going to happen? Well, one of two things. You know what, not even one of two things. <laughs> it's long due. It's been in the works, not necessarily... I'm rambling at this point. I'm trying to make this sound really cool. Oh, it's going to be Jack 2. Jack Jack 2 for PlayStation 3. Continuing on that little collect the uh, not collect the thon but the, the Jack 2. Yeah. I started the series off in May of last year and that'll probably be about the point where it starts up now. So that'll be great. You can look forward to that on my very loud PlayStation 3. I'm certainly looking forward to playing that game again. But, yeah, so after Darksiders, expect Jack 2. Yay! That's just a little bit of information if you made it this far. But, another congratulations if you have, because you made it to the end of the video. Yay! You're amazing, and thank you so much for watching these videos. Share them around if you'd like. Uh, probably not this one, though. If you wanted me to talk about Pokemon, you most certainly can. I'm gonna have the Chaotic Reunion. I'll see you all in the next one. Ciao.